Today we're talking about how you silence a critical mom. Did you people grow up with a critical mother? Is that what? Well, I love this quote. There's no way to be a perfect mother and a million ways to be a good one. So first up, we got a daughter who says her relationship with her mother is at an all time low. She says her mother judges and criticizes her constantly. And her mom is not only her mom, she's her boss. And this is all going down in the bridal shop from Hill. My mom is the ultimate critical mom. She's the owner of a bridal shop as well as a wedding venue. And I left my corporate job four years ago to start working with her. But ever since I started working with her, our relationship has become strained. And she's becoming more and more critical of me. She criticizes how I dress, the fact that I don't wear makeup on the daily, my hair, where I live, my husband and my marriage, the whole nine yards. I've built a bridal empire and my daughters have helped me, especially Carrie, but at the same time, I don't want Carrie or any of the girls to ruin that for me. Sometimes Carrie's appearance is so unprofessional that I literally had to put a dress code in place so she could finally get it. She usually, a lot of times, will show up to work without a lick of makeup on. She's got her hair in a ball cap. She shows up in jeans and a t-shirt. Sometimes she'll go days without showering and I cannot even fathom that at all. The criticism and insults even happen in front of customers, especially when she's stressed. My mom constantly undermines me. I depend on Carrie so much, but she does sometimes challenge me in front of the clients even, and I just really, it bothers me so badly. She does too much with the clients sometimes and doesn't allow me to take the lead or run the appointment. I need Mel's help. If my mom doesn't stop belittling me and start respecting me, she's not only gonna lose her manager and star employee, she's gonna lose her relationship with her daughter. So Carrie, let's start with you. Um, you said that she belittles you. Can you describe for me what that's? Yeah, it's more a tone um, that she gets. Um, it's just a very um, sharp, um, kind of way that she speaks. It's a body language. It's a very um, kind of aggressive. It's very handsy. It's very put you in your place and it's filled with a lot of sighs and eye rolls and just kind of huffs and puffs. So it's kind of more so um, just an overall tone or demeanor. Well, you have, you have to think that I am a very intense person. I'm a pretty passionate person and she is as well in a different way. Um, but sometimes it's a moment. It's like a, it's a moment of the day. There's so much we're managing and keeping track of that like sometimes, and I feel bad about it, obviously, of course, but then like, I feel like sometimes she can't let it go. Well, if it were just a moment, we wouldn't be sitting here on national television, right? I mean, that's fair to say. So what's the most critical thing that she's, that she's ever said to you? Um, She's always had a tendency to be very critical about my appearance. Um, when we were younger, she would say things like, you look better tan, you need to go to the tanning bed, or I don't like you with short hair, it makes your cheeks look really chubby, or um, uh, my style, which is very different from her style and different from my sisters who are definitely more on trend, so I was always kind of like, my style was stacked up against theirs, and so um, appearance has probably been the number one thing she's the most So do you get nervous about what you're wearing before you go to work? Uh, yeah, I have. I, it's definitely helped that there's been a dress code put in place because I know like her expectations. But also too, I think sometimes I get an unfair rap because my job is very multifaceted. Um, there are times I am directly with the bride. There are times that I'm with our clients. But um, another aspect of my job is, is I do all of the linen runs. So I'm the one, you know, cleaning up. I'm the one taking all the dirty linens. I'm the one, you know, doing the work-related errands. I'm the, so there's an aspect of my job too that is not necessarily with our clients or clients oriented. It's a part of my job where I am doing more of the hands-on nitty gritty kind of stuff. And those were really the days that I would take the most leniency when it came to things like dress code or, you know, wear the ball cap or the jeans. I mean. I'm reasonable. If we're cleaning, if we're deep cleaning, yeah, we're going to wear the yoga clothes and we're not going to be intersecting with the public. So I'm not unreasonable that way. But here is where there's some low blows that I feel like are uncalled for. Like, 
I personally don't wear makeup on the daily. That's not a lifestyle thing that's important to me. That's not an aspect where I want to put my money. It's not an aspect where I want to put my finances. And you know what? Wearing makeup is not something that makes me feel more confident. Mm -hmm. It's not something that makes me feel like I have to do it to put my best face forward, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But you'll make comments like, well, without makeup, your eyes just look weak. You just look weak. You don't look as healthy or you don't look as this or you don't look as that. That's unnecessary. I shouldn't have to wear makeup to represent your brand beautifully. Well, as a businesswoman, one thing that I will say, and this is the thing that we got to pull apart, is that it is true that if you own a business, you have certain brand standards. And if you want to portray, and I've looked at your website, and you have a very beautiful website and everything is perfect and beautiful and everybody looks amazing. Um, and if you want to hire people that are fully made up and that only wear a certain thing to work, that's your prerogative as a business owner. The question that is kind of spinning around in my mind is that this has been an issue forever in your relationship yeah. that sounds like it went to Mach 10 the second you started working for your mom's business. It's definitely intensified. And I think one of the things that's very hard is the separation because we are close as a family unit, but then also I'm together with my mom most every single day working mm -hmm. is, is it, it, it makes it harder. The criticism at work stirs up, I guess, personal criticisms that from the past and from my childhood. And, you know, you mentioned that you feel like sometimes I hold on to things or sometimes I'm very, I don't want to let things go. But at, at the same time, you know, when we are in the middle of a conflict sometimes, like, I, and especially if it's like appearance oriented, that's not just hearkening back to what's being said right in that moment. This is years of stuff. Mm -hmm. So have you ever pushed back? I, here, here is the hard thing for me. I feel like you and dad raised me right in the fact that I was taught to be respectful. I was taught to be very kind. I was taught to be, and one of the words and one of the phrases and one of the things is, and you know, you've mentioned it, that you feel like I'm challenging. So anytime at work, I have a different way or a different thought process or a different this or a different that, and I speak up or anytime I give any sort of pushback, then you've characterized it like I'm disrespecting because you've used words like, well, you're challenging me. You're coming at me. You're this, you're that. Or, you know, before she said, like, she's speaking to me nasty. And then the moment that I get flustered and the moment that I'm at my breaking point and the moment that I say something back, she said to me things like, well, I would never speak to a boss like this. Well, I would never tolerate another boss speaking to me in the manner to which she was spoken. But you do because it's your mother. And, and in a normal corporate type setting, you know, when I was in a corporate environment, if a boss spoke to you in that manner or just was rough around the edges and didn't really didn't realize that impact of what they said or their behavior, you have an HR department to go to. My mom is the HR. Right. I have no effective way. Well, you do because you're at the MR department, yeah. right? You're at the Mel Robbins department. And, and, you know, I do have to keep saying, though, that, that I get it. You have a business to run. But I think... But, and the other thing I need to say is that if you don't know the impact, it becomes easy to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. So what do you want to respond to that? Well, I feel like we both are very passionate. We're very passionate about different things, and we go about it very different because I've been the recipient of plenty of eye rolls and shrugs and kind of... I mean, so... That actually kind of goes both ways. We're both guilty of that. But here is the difference. As an owner, if you feel like, and as my, as my employer, if you feel like I've crossed the line as an employee, you're quick to tell me that I've crossed the line as an employee. When it benefits you to be the mom, and well, I would never talk to my mom like that, or I would never give my mom attitude, but the reality is you don't talk to me and treat me in the manner to which you treat our other employees. And so 
once again, it's a double standard. I'm in a well, lose let's, situation. Well, let's bring in another voice. I want to hear how your sister Courtney is affected by what she also says is her critical mom. My name is Courtney, and I am Laurie's daughter and Carrie's younger sister. I totally agree with Carrie. Our mom can be extremely critical. I'm a cosmetologist and I work for my mom part-time when she needs me to do hair and makeup for her brides. It seems like she makes excuses not to have me come on full-time. She's definitely been critical of the way I've done hair and makeup before. I've also found out that she's referred other stylists to her brides instead of referring me. She has no idea that it hurts me when she criticizes my work. Well, we're gonna hear from Courtney when we get back and the real reason Lori won't hire her own daughter to do certain things at this bridal shop. We'll be right back. Now we're back talking about how to silence a critical mom and Carrie and Courtney have a critical mom for a mom and a boss. So Courtney, um, how is your mom critical of you? Well, she's definitely not as critical of me um, as she is Carrie, I think, um, especially when it comes to like appearance and stuff like that. Um, it's more so like when it comes to her, like me being a hairstylist, like I used to do her hair for her and she would always be super critical, like more critical than she would if it was a different hairstylist, which actually now she does go to a different hairstylist <laughs> because of the fact that like, we would literally get an argument. I would not at the let salon. my daughter cut my hair. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> I know. I think that's kind of typical for hairstylists and moms. Like they're gonna be more critical on you. But yeah, that would be probably the main thing when it comes. What's to What's the her main criticism. criticism though, in terms of the way when it comes to the business? Um, it's not that she's been like outwardly critical of me or my work, but it just seems like there's other hairstylists that she's become friends with or you know gotten kind of close to in the community that it seems like she is working with more than me. So it makes me feel like maybe she is critical of the way I do hair and stuff because obviously she's been critical of me doing her own hair in the past. Well, is there a business reason why you don't hire yes. her? So what the, is the business so reason? So the business reason for Courtney is that I feel so responsible in that she has a very nice job as a cosmetology instructor. She also juggles a book of her own clients. Mm -hmm. So for me, the guilt is what if my business doesn't continue or isn't as successful that I can replace that income? That's my only thing. It's like, I'm, I'm not of the level that I would be able to replace her income. So a lot of times for me, it's not that I don't want to ask her to do projects with us. Um, a lot of times it is a little chaotic on- Okay, like, so now let's, let's, yeah, let's, yes. tell the, let's have the yeah. real conversation. Okay. So, the, so, so there, what, yeah. is, what is the real, like, because there's the mom conversation, which you just had, right. and now there's the real conversation, which as a woman running a business- It sometimes with Courtney can be a little chaotic as far as like communication and whether that's I don't communicate it well, she doesn't understand me well. I just or, feel like, I just wish you would tell me that. I wish you would tell me, well, I don't wanna have you on full time because I feel like you don't have your shit together. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if that's the way you feel, just tell me that. What I constantly hear is two conversations happening like this. You have business conversations and then you have emotional conversations. Mm -hmm. And what I hear from you is a lot of hurt. And then what happens when you don't talk about the deeper issue is that everything that you see your mom doing becomes more evidence that other people are better than you, that she doesn't want you, that that's what's happening over and over for you as her daughter. And I can see yeah. you getting very emotional. What's coming up for you? Just like everything you just said. And like, I've never had that conversation with her. And so turn and tell her what's coming up for you. I just feel like it's hurtful. It seems like you want the validation from other people more than me. You've had these other relationships with other stylists. It seems like I've just been kind of pushed to the side. What is it that you heard her say? that she doesn't feel included, that I'm not including you. It goes even deeper than that. What does it feel like for her to watch you work with other people? 
Is it a rejection that you're not good enough? Yeah, kind of. I know a lot of it is that you don't want to take away income from me, but we've had conversations before about like just getting a shampoo ball in there and starting small. And then like, it's like this other stylist that's come in that you've been working with more. It's like, at one point you said, oh, wouldn't it be so awesome if we could get that into a full service salon so she could be a part of it? But you were never excited about it like that when it, it was just me. Well, I was really excited about it when I first started that business. And, and you moved for your own life benefit to do what you needed to do, you moved and I felt like then she moved for a short time, right when I was getting the new building going and starting. I, I, you know you know what and, I'm, I'm present to? Is not listening. Yeah. Here's what I'm wondering. As I'm wondering what happened to you. It's a question that I ask all the time on the Mel Robbins show. Mm -hmm. What happened to you? Because when you understand what happened, it helps you see the patterns that got put in place. Doesn't necessarily justify them, but we're gonna find out what happened when we come back. Welcome back, we're talking about how to silence a critical mom and Carrie and Courtney have a critical mom as both a mother and a boss. Now, based on the research, a critical mom is usually projecting her insecurities onto her children. And oftentimes we do that as moms because we feel that we're gonna be judged by other people for the way that our kids look or for the way that they act or because of the mistakes that we made in the past. And so Lori, I wanna know, what is it that happened to you that caused this fear and insecurity that you live with? Mm -hmm. When I was 17 years old, the summer before my senior year, I found out that I was pregnant with Carrie. Mm. And it was a huge scandal. Um, it was something very huge to walk through. Um, literally, I had to, it was the church's belief at the time, and there's still a lot of really great people there, but it was my church's belief that if you were in leadership, and so I was because of my dad being the pastor, I had to stand up in front of the church of about 1,500 people and confess my sin. It was very public. There were a lot of people that judged during that whole thing on if I was repentant enough. Um, I could not finish going to my Christian high school. I had to go to the pregnant girls school, um, but I had to walk through that really tough situation. So, I mean, I think that like, I don't wanna be that broken record. That's, that's been 32 years, you know? That's been 32 years ago. So I don't wanna have this broken record of but it's like, still playing. It is, and I just, I can't get over it. And they know it. I mean, they know my story. There's no, nothing hidden about that story, but I don't want to be the woman that can never let that go or can ever function in life better because I'm so worried about like what the public sees because I'm just so super aware of like the public, you know? Well, you were traumatized in front of 1,500 people. <laughs> and... I'm sure it's why you hold it together because I've been amazed by how unemotional you've been on the outside as your daughters have been talking and talking and talking. But I mean, I wanted them to be able to say what they needed or wanted to say. I didn't want to interject too much. Um, but yeah, I do mind trying to... See, what I see is this. The focus on your girls particularly Carrie, being a certain way. It's more about protection. And you do it so subconsciously that you probably don't even hear it. That if you see something in her that would have caused you to be exposed as a youngster, you're gonna point it out. And that's why it keeps happening and you don't realize it. And with you, it's the same kind of thing. You wanna make sure she's taken care of. You wanna make sure she's protected. And the challenge for you is going to be to realize that that's your stuff. So here's the thing I want you all to take away from this. For the two of you, the big insight I need you to have is that your mother can't read your mind. Yeah. And she's got decades of patterns that are so caught up in making sure that 
you don't get criticized by anybody else, that she doesn't even realize that she's criticizing you. And so you got to learn how to speak at a deeper level, and you've got to be able to interrupt her and tell her what it's doing in terms of how it's making you feel. You got it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Second thing, any lasting relationship needs vows, and you're in the wedding business. <laughs> and what I want you to do is I want you to make a vow to each one of your daughters right now based on what you heard them say to you today. So let's start with Carrie. Okay. Why don't you hold hands? Because okay. that's what most people who are doing <laughs> vows do. Okay. Um, I vow to let you be your own person and have your own interests and your own rights and your own style because you're amazing. And I vow to work on the work relationship and try to have boundaries or to have boundaries when we need to cut that off and just be mom and daughter. And I vow to listen to you more. Awesome. Can you two switch seats real quick? All right, your turn. I vow to keep you more included and to validate your talent because you have a lot. And I vow to be supportive to you, but in a way that makes you feel empowered and not like mom is just trying to fix things for you. I now pronounce you mother and daughters. Here we go.